Justin Kendall, assistant editor of Brewbound, and we're here at the Brewbound session in Santa Monica at the Lowe's Hotel. And right now we're on the live stream lounge brought to you by Siemens and the National Beer Wholesalers Association. And I'm sitting here with David Macon, vice president of uh, sales and marketing for Firestone Walker. How's it going, David? It's going great. How about yourself, sir? It's going well so far. Thanks for uh, doing the live stream with us today. Anytime. It's my honor. I am. I am slightly disappointed, though. You brought a backpack. There was no 805 in the backpack. Uh, what do we got to do to get some 805 around you here? You got to give me a heads up. I know. I should have done that. Yeah, I don't I'll know. take care. You just got to give me a little email or something like that. Well, next time. Next time. Yeah. But or maybe we can grab one after this. So uh, tell me a little bit about 805. This is your juggernaut. This is like the big one. You know, it's 60% of your volume, as David Walker said recently. And he said 90% of that is here in the state of California. So tell me, what it, why is that brand blowing up so much? Uh, it's, a, it's a unique and, and beautiful combination of, of brand and simplicity. Um, you know, we have a, an incredible brand team that has, has, you know, intentionally positioned it to be exactly what it is. Um, you know, we don't even say what kind of beer it is on the package or mother cartons or anything like that, but it, it is you know, most definitely a lifestyle approach. And I think people really identify with that. You know, it really started on the central coast of California and that's what we've stuck with and that has been working. And we've seen now that it travels to Southern California, it travels to Northern California. And now we're in six states with it with uh, two more planned for next year and further stress testing the brand to find out if it will continue to travel as an area code. What, what are those uh, two states that you guys are gonna add? We're gonna go to Washington and Oregon this year in the PAC Northwest. So. Obviously, that's a kind of a rough and tumble market right there, right? And uh, plenty of markets um, are, are rough these days, but there's a lot of craft depth there. And so we'll get a real good idea of, of how well we're doing with the brand by how well Washington and Oregon consumers accept it or, or not. I, I tend to think that they will. Will it be as big as California? No, I think that's obviously a you know, you know, complete farce in terms of how big it is here, but certainly we think it'll do well and, and, and at least uh, double our business up there. Definitely, and I mean, it's definitely a brand I think that will travel, and I, I, that was gonna be my question, you know, when, when are we gonna get it in the rest of the country, you know? Because I'm sure the demand is there, and you guys probably hear it all the time, but I mean, two states, that's a start, you know? Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. I, you know, I've been here now three and a half years, and what I've seen from our volume going from 175,000 barrels that first year to around 420 to finish this year. Um, if you've been to our brewery and follow our social media feed, you can see we've just finished a, a brew house expansion. We have tanks going in literally as we speak and uh, more to come. But essentially, you know, that's the house that 805 built and we're preparing for a future that involves 805 going into more states. What that looks like right now, I couldn't tell you. Um, we're just sort of, uh, I. I at the risk of sounding like we know what we're doing, sometimes we don't. And in some ways, you're just making it up as you go, and you know you you make assumptions based on markets. But I certainly think that the Pack Northwest um, is a is a great way to find out what the health of the brand is. And you know, again, it's an obvious it's an obvious challenge for us to see if that area code will change. But that's the best part is it's transcended the area code itself. And I think people identifying with that lifestyle want to be a part of it. It's such a cool brand, and I, I just wonder where where the ceiling is and how, how you test that. How do you test you know where the ceiling is with that brand? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. I, I think that in many ways the ceiling is limitless. And even in California, we've we've recently done, uh, let me back up a little bit, we, we convened a distributor council for the first time last year. And you know one of the things they asked us was, you know before you really start to expand in, in a huge way with 805, you know, what do you, you know, you need to know who's drinking it and why they're drinking it. And so we did a little bit of consumer research and we've, we've really found that we're only scratching the surface in California, even still for as well as we've done here. Um, we thought this year it would plateau a little bit, but it has, it has really accelerated in Southern California, uh, remarkably so. You, you did that market research. Who, who is the consumer? What, what did that sort of tell you on who's drinking this? That's just it is that we never really got our arms around that because it quite honestly is um, such a wide group of people and touches so many different demographics, which is why I say I think we, we've only begun to just figure out how far we can go even in California. 
Ah, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I you, think so too. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you talked a little bit about the expansion that you guys are, are that's going on. It seems like you guys are in you're always in expansion mode. Tell me a little bit about the uh, latest expansion that you guys are doing and what, where that'll take you. Well, we just finished a new brew house. Uh, we call it Brew House 2. It's essentially actually three brew houses because remember that plant was the original slow brew when uh, when David and Adam bought the building. Um, and, uh, you know, those two came together a few years ago to form Brew House 1, but essentially it's 1, 2, and now we finished Brew House 3. We just added it on to the very front of the building. Uh, extending it all the way to Ramada Road, um, and that's taken our capacity, um, you know, quite a bit further than we are now. Uh, I would say, you know, you know, when it's all said and done between package line and uh, brew house and tanks, you know, we'll we'll have somewhere in the neighborhood of eight hundred thousand to a million barrels of capacity. That's amazing. Yeah, so it is. Uh, it's a little scary. <laughs> it definitely <laughs> is. I imagine. How far out do you do you think that is before you guys are are you know pushing that? I, I think that's that's the best part, you know, when you when you look at our leadership um, and and talk to them, I, I think we're in a very, very good position because we're very patient. Um, we're not in a hurry to fill our capacity. We're going to make decisions on new markets as judiciously as possible and really take our time. Um, on the Firestone side, for instance, we're only going into three new states next year, even though I can probably go into a heck of a lot more, but we don't want to do things at the risk of stressing out our, our team and extending our overextending ourselves to the point where we can't do a great job at the rollouts we're doing so um, you know this year we already have enough on our plate going in 2018 with the pack northwest 805 expansion and then on the firestone side minnesota indiana and, and north carolina which is going to be a great market that's that's an awesome so how big is uh that footprint how big is your footprint once you add those three states? once we add those three states we'll be in 33 states total um, and then 805 will be in eight total states but it doesn't sound like you guys are in a super rush to fill out the map or anything like that. No, I, I, again, I, I think it speaks volumes about our leadership and um, where we're going and the patience that we're exhibiting. Um, we we want to make sure we make the right decisions. And if it means that, you know, in a, obviously we're in a very strange market environment right now. I mean, beer as a whole um, is really taking a beating. I mean, when you consider that Bud and, and Bud Light and Coors Light represent a third of industry volume and down almost 10% collectively. That's a huge, that's a huge hit to beer in general. I, I think all of us, um, craft, import, otherwise, ought to be paying attention to that. That's, that's a huge concern for people. It definitely is, and we hear it over and over. I, I believe it was Ronald Denels from uh, Heineken was talking about it at a conference recently and said that we've lost, or that uh, beer has lost 35 million barrels in the last 20 years. Yeah, I think I think if any of us in the beer business, um, you know, that are in this for the long haul, and certainly most certainly we are, uh, have to pay attention to that. And that, um, how do we re-engage with the consumers? There's a lot of factors too, right? I mean, obviously, there's a huge opportunity for the craft side to to gain share in that environment, considering those three brands I mentioned earlier losing as much volume as they have. But at the same time, if people are drinking less beer, I don't see how that can be good for our industry overall. Yeah, for sure. Well, David, I want to take, uh, I want to thank you. I should say, take the time out to thank you for coming on, and hopefully we can crack some 805s today. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.